Easter, and now we're having this uh, the house pressure cleaned, painted, and uh, they're repairing any of minor, you know, uh, stucco and roof work, stuff like that. So all that's being done. It's probably going to take a whole week. So again, sorry for the delay, but that's fine. There's not been a great deal going on. Um, what I'm going to do is focus on the pattern that I put in the room, and I'm also going to touch upon silver. And uh, I pointed this out to Bryce, who did a good job. Um, but I'm going to show you how to calculate this as far as when you get a diamond pattern, because this is very key. This diamond pattern and structure is telling us something. And I'm going to be looking for prices to go higher, even though you've got this you know, playing around here, uh, for what I see, for what we have, uh, I'm going to be looking for an upside move to around 83K. And that's a confluence point right here. Now, let's ignore this. This pattern already happened, and this was a target on it from here to here. I already traded that. Um, but what we're going to really focus is on the diamond. Now, highs and lows in a, in a diamond, they can fluctuate, and they can also uh, become anomalous with the sense that they'll, they'll become outliers. And like this spike down here to around 59K, this is an outlier. Now, I looked at many different exchanges. Some of this went beyond. So I kind of am just going to average it out. I'm not going to get crazy exact. Uh, this is just Coinbase as an exchange. There are many exchanges. And I look at all the other exchanges to get an idea, the approximation of where, uh, what's likely uh, to happen. All right, so uh, this 59K, that's fine. Uh, and then we take the top, which is around 73, the upper 73, close to 74. And what do you, what do you have right there? And I can tell you that you're going to have between the uh, 14, 15, you know, in the 14K uh, area. Um, so, you know, uh, that is your measurement that you're doing. You're doing the high inside the diamond and the low. And this is the low. And the diamond starts from here. It's where its structure starts from. So you don't focus on this one in the center. You focus, you, normally you would if it fits within the guidelines. Uh, sometimes you don't get spikes like this, but I have to add this because this is, those are the numbers. That's what's there. And even if it trades outside of the diamond, um, it's still part of it because it is a low and you have to take that into account. So that's why we get the 14. Now, where do we get the breakout? The breakout was right around the 68K area right in here. So if you have that, um, 15, uh, around 15,000, 14,000, you're looking at numbers that go all the way to the confluence area that I was speaking about previously before. So that adds more gravitas to what we're looking at. And uh, it could be from the 82, 83, anywhere within there. You know, um, you're not wrong. You know, it's an, an approximation. There's no um, exactitude in crypto because crypto is traded on many exchanges. One exchange can have different numbers than another. And what I do is I like to average them out. And I also like to weight according to dominance, kind of like in genetics. If you know anything about genetics, you have dominant and you have uh, non-dominant. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's on the tip of my brain. But um, sub submissive, uh, you know, you basically dominant and submissive traits. Uh, and um, it, that has to do with the genes, genes and you know, dominant traits always overcome the submissive unless you get uh, doubling. And uh, I'll, I'll talk about that later if that ever comes up, but it's not important. Um, so we have the dominant structure and uh, this is a dominant structure as well. This is the, the pricing that you're looking at. And we're going to focus on this confluence right here. And that's what 
the target and the, everything points to. So off of this, even though you have prices that are fluctuating, going down and up, this is what's there. Now, does that mean this pattern will work out exactly? No, everything in trading is probabilities. This pattern might not happen, and we might trade all the way down to this area down here because we're in a having type of situation. Now, statistically, um, having periods usually have fluctuation to the downside. Where they have an accumulation phase. And um, I know that's kind of confusing. So we have conflicting data hitting each other. This is not an ideal pattern because of that. Um, but still, this is what's there. This is what I can calculate and see. And I can't trade against what I can see, uh, if that makes sense. I have to trade what is there. I could take into account, and the way you do that is you might lower or um, not trade, uh, you know, conflicting data. So if you're in a period, like a few week period, I think it's, it's uh, usually a two to, to three weeks, up to 21 days that you get within this period of time. And it usually occurs also after the halving. So we get, what, a week? So we're in a kind of a, a mixed bag situation, uh, to put it bluntly. But that's fine. If we do break down to the downside and we get down to the 50K area, that would be perfectly good because I will be buying more. I am looking to get super bullish. I bought here. Um, I closed out hedges that I had on Ethereum in the three under the 300 and uh, 3,300, uh, three, I think it was 3,250, somewhere around there. But I closed out hedges that I had there. So I'm building up my... Um, uh, building up my crypto again and I bought here and I'm willing to go in big because what I'm looking at to occur and we'll go to a longer range chart but anyway you get the idea of how I calculated the top here the bottom here within the triangle itself and the target up here and anywhere from the 82 to 83 makes sense um, but that's how you go over and you, you uh, calculate a triangle, just so you know. So there's some education. I, I pointed this out in other videos as well, by the way. If you go back, way back, <laughs> like six, five years ago. Um, so they're there. Uh, now, as well, uh, let's go over and take a look at what do we want to see. Oh, we want to see silver. This is one I want to talk about. This is the one that had broken out. And I've been looking at this for quite a long time, as you know. Let's go to a weekly chart. I think that'll be the most impactful, I guess you can say. Now, if you remember on silver, I have a target, specific target, that's up to 36. And I am very happy with its movement. It's uh, broken out. I, I said when we last hit down here, uh, the free money over here, the resistance up here, it retraced down to here. It's fulfilled everything. And once it did this, it went here, it hit its target for a bull market move. And, you know, spiked up, spiked back down, played its games, uh, the Jamie Diamonds of the world. Um, they can they can play the games all they want, uh, but the reality of what price will do over time is what matters. And there's all kinds of reasons for this. It's very simple. The inflationary environment is still going up. I don't care what they tell you, and it's going to be interesting to see them try to cut. They're supposed to go for three cuts. I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going to get data that's going to be negative. And they're, they might hold off or maybe just do one cut. Uh, we'll see. But don't be surprised if they're not cutting because prices are still elevating. Uh, and there's going to be demand destruction in the marketplace, undoubtedly. I'm already seeing it. People do not like the prices that they're paying for stuff, and they're becoming um, 
it's going to start hitting. It's just starting. I mean, a lot of these trends take a while to take effect. I mean, look at um, Tesla. Remember Tesla? Let's go back there for a second before I go back to um, silver. If we remember Tesla, and I was telling you, you know, that this thing was going to collapse, it's overvalued, it's kind of a joke. Um, and Tesla is declining. And it's, you know, it took forever to do it. I was talking about it being a sell all the way over in uh, early the 20s, 21 area. So um, it topped out here, it split, it did everything. It was the wonderkin, you know, but the charts don't care. And sometimes they take a long time to um, come to fruition, but they do in the end. Uh, majority of the time, uh, they do what they do, and they, they have their declines as well as their up moves. And this was just waiting to happen, and sure enough, it's going down. And where could it go? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if you start hearing people scream and yell, uh, at least to the 61.8, right? But I can see it going all the way down here. Remember, this one is still very overvalued, and now their sales uh, growth has declined. That's a very bad thing. A lot of uh, just hedge funds, just from the, their uh, perspective of the quant that, data that they do, uh, they try to stay um, political, I guess you can say, and they don't look out into the future, and uh, they're just trying to, to get sales, is the only way I can think about it, you know, to get money flowing in, oh, you're, you're getting a really good deal, blah, blah, blah. but those people that are buying at levels, say in the 200 range, aren't getting a good deal. And there's more than likely that you're going to get a drop that's going to be precipitous because this is the nature of something that makes a giant bull runs. And we've seen this in crypto many times, right? We've seen the 88.6% pullbacks or more. Um, that can also happen maybe a little bit less because of the, um, the Wall Street firms uh, that provide backing for it, but it can still... Uh, happen and it does a frequent amount of time uh, and if it loses favor uh, then you're looking at a, a much higher uh, decline um, that can get to numbers that all, all the way down here in the under $50 range so that's an example of you know don't listen to what people are telling you you know pay attention to what happens most of the time that's why Wall Street pundits and so forth, I, they're mostly salespeople, um, and they're mostly trying to push products to get sales commissions, and uh, to for their AUM, their uh, you know it, that's that's their business is the only way to put it, and uh, they're not trying to really give you the best product, you know, investment return and good timing. And that's a problem to me. You need good timing uh, in trading. That's why I'm very patient. That's one of the things that I've learned and I've done very well with. But anyway, that is an example of that. And uh, right now with BTC, as I pointed out in the other video, um, where we are, you know, I'm looking for much bigger numbers. Once we go through the halving, uh, you know, it, you've got a year and uh, about 18 months, basically. So a little over a year and a half. And the, the kind of points to October as the main area. But things have changed in the marketplace, too, we have to take into account. These ETFs are not retail traders. They are buy and holders. Their timelines are five to ten years out. And they're not looking for little returns. They're looking for exponential returns. So the more big money that goes into it, it's going to grab up the supply. You're going to have shock upside moves. 
and I can't calculate what they're going to be. I can give you good estimations, uh, but my targets are going to be much higher than they were in the past because we didn't have the ETFs. My targets would have been in the 120s or, uh, you know, maybe the 138, you know, a doubling of price from the prior high to low. And that would have been logical, um, you know, for the next having. But because you have these Wall Street firms in here and BlackRock, and BlackRock's the biggest, um, they are going to, and what they're going to also cause, they're going to cause this to spread out across the world. People have not even started to accumulate Bitcoin, is what I'm telling you. And the targets that we're going to see, I would say the minimum main target is going to be around that 241. And we should see that within the next year into uh, you know, 18 months after the happening. And it could be much higher. It could go up to the 400. And it could go much higher than that. It could be in the 700,000 range. Um, like I said, there are going to be numbers that are going to be absolutely fantastical in nature, uh, in my view, simply because this is a different kind of asset. This is an asset that has a capped supply. Remember, there's only going to be 21 million Bitcoin, period. I don't think people understand that, so... What's going to happen is going to be something that nobody's seen before. And uh, that's the, more than likely. Now, will it be a slow and gradual thing? Maybe it'll just be slow and gradual. They'll just pick it up slowly over time. And just that's another thing. Institutions can go over and uh, do things by inflows. And they don't have to go over and go into a frenzy. Matter of fact, they don't want to be in a frenzy. It's the retail traders that will be in the frenzy. Um, and I don't know what the effects of having both institutional and the retail uh, come together. Retail usually will look at the price and say, oh, that's too high. I can't afford that. Um, and that's a negative on them. But the institutions are like, screw that. Look at the numbers of the inflows and the available supply. And there's a big dichotomy of... Uh, uh, difference um, and uh, people don't realize that but uh, yeah my targets have been elevated greatly so I am preparing for the big up moves and I'm gonna move a lot of assets I've already have a lot of cash on the sidelines that I've started moving into this and it's mostly for a hodl position not for it's gonna be uh, akin to what they're doing I'm gonna be looking at the the um, uh, long term. So I've been moving percentages into the hot hot position of five years out and on. So I'm looking at around you know the 2030 mark uh, before I would really want to sell anything because I see numbers being much higher than what people are anticipating. Uh, you haven't seen nothing yet. It's going to be it's going to be a freak show. Is what I would say and it has to do mainly because of the billionaires are gonna get the clue they're starting to understand the value proposition of Bitcoin and um, yeah it's gonna be very interesting and it's gonna be overwhelming too because it's gonna come from all sides there are so many people without money and uh, with money that um, they're gonna see this as a store of value that's unmutable and super easy to protect uh, I mean extremely easy they do their cold storage wallets and it's gonna be something else it's this is gonna be a big game changer and it surpassing gold silver that's just that's coming uh, you know and anybody who doesn't recognize it in the finance industry then you're idiots uh, because uh, it's this is a this is the new age, and it's going to the moon is the only way I could say. And I'm not one of those people. I hate all those. I see like uh, crypto news alerts. I think that guy 
every every other day or every day actually he comes out with these projections of where the price is and uh, Kathy Lee said 1.9 million by next year uh, you know all these other no we'll, we'll go by the charts the charts have yet to show what the likelihood of Bitcoin is going to do but anyway I hope you enjoy the video and I hope you understand the logic of the uh, pattern that I showed you and that I gave you Let me go back to there because that's important it's very useful and things don't have to happen. Um, they can change, like they changed with the ETF buying. But we have to recognize what's there in the charts and not what we want. Um, so if we do get a drop, let's say this breaks to the downside and you get a break below the apex. This is your apex right here. You see these two points? This is your apex. Say we get a break below 64. So what is that going to equal to? If you calculated it, you just invert the calculation to the upside. And you're going to be looking at this down here. I would love, love, absolutely love to have a move to the downside uh, where I can buy down here. That's a possibility. Not a likelihood. This is a positive um, setup. So we'll see. But if they can break it down there, uh, you know, the institutions want to grab as much supply as they can. And one of the ways you do that is you create fear. And, um, you know, they would they could push their uh, a certain amount. Uh, because when they have the hammer and they have the ability to move the markets, I've seen them do this in stocks so many times. Uh, but I understood what their game plan was. So that's why I've always been able to profit the majority of the time. I'm not perfect, uh, and that's you know the key. Now I will have the video as soon as these guys uh, come out. I did not forget about all the ones that you have requested. It's just on the delay, so I do apologize for that. But I've got too much work around here being done, and uh, yeah, I I kind of need a little bit of time for that. So, but that's coming. I didn't forget. I've got them all marked down. I got a pad. And I've gone through a lot of the charts, and uh, yeah, that'll be coming out as soon as I can. Uh, maybe in a few days, maybe uh, tomorrow, who knows, we'll see, but it's, gonna, it's coming soon. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Here we go. Listen to that machine, what a machine. I think that's a, a, a compressor, if I'm correct. But anyway, <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video.